And we are back for part two of the part two sauce review, joined by the one and only, uh, the 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 hard to gather, the hard to lock down, Mr. Marcus Coleman, the future DB coach of the Jets. What is up, my friend? <laughs> What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm 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 waiting for Tony Odom to get a job with the Jets and uh, or with another team because he's been killing it with the DBs, and then for you to get a job, and then for me to text you after game day and ask you about why guys are playing in no man's land and all that type of shit that we talk about all the time. So. Yeah, I know. I, I went on that myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, we're we're obviously excited to to be here with a uh, was it 12 years in the NFL or was it 13 years? Mark, it was somewhere right um, around there, right? I always forget. Yeah. Literally, literally every time. Yeah, it's I think, I think you've told me that a thousand times, but obviously having okay. a former NFL DB to break down a DB's tape is quite valuable. So I appreciate Marcus a lot for um, for sharing his time with me. Obviously very busy uh, coaching at Trinity. Do you want, you want to shout out Trinity? Do you want to talk about Trinity or anything like that or tell people a little bit what you're doing? I'm sure there's some Jets fans out there who remember you oh, fondly yeah, and the Monday Night Miracle and all that stuff. So uh, tell us some people what you're up to. I already heard it. So <laughs> Yeah, we're just uh... – yeah, I'm the DB coach, uh, special teams coordinator at Trinity University and here in San Antonio, Texas. So we're, for everybody who doesn't know much about Trinity, we're on the lines of, tier-wise, we're probably in the Mount Union, Wisconsin, Whitewater, you know, John Carroll, St. John's, you know, kind of element. You know, we're not your typical D3. Um, you know, we recruit that way as well. You know, we recruit FCS kids, you know, which is why we've been so good. So, just doing that. And right now it's, you know, camp season. It's like I told you earlier. Uh, so just going to prospect camps, doing that kind of stuff and get a break here in a little bit. And then um, I'll do uh, the Bill Walsh internship uh, with the Baltimore Ravens in July. Um, and, you know, we'll kind of see what happens with that. And, you know, just got to get ready for, for camp. You know, here it's coming up soon. We got like, like a month, you know, so it's really kind of yeah. reset and get rolling. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. I hope you 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 land a job in the NFL. And uh, people might think I'm joking when I'm telling you. Like, if I see your DBs playing a certain way, I'm texting you. Like, I'm going to do. It. Like, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Like, I will talk some shit. So I know you uh, will. I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping that all that all works out for you with with the internship with the Ravens. But um, to not waste well, your time, good. obviously, you're busy as hell. Training camp, all that stuff. You're you're gracious enough to uh, to give us, you know, a little bit of time to to talk some film here. So. We're going to talk some film because that's that's yeah. that's that's why that's why you're here. So sauce squeeze. Um, I'm going to point out to Marcus where he is on the play just because I've I've already watched 62 plays of him, so I kind of just know where he is. Um, yeah. He typically the plays top. left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tell by the length, right? Like he's clearly taller, right? Than Gary, right. And and, <laughs> yeah. and and he and and I was saying this the other day. It's the worst when you're watching like a receiver or a DB. And they're the exact same skin tone and they wear the exact same accessories as another guy. And it's like, damn it, dude, it's so hard to find them. And I mess up all the time, but I know. sauce is pretty easy to find. So sauce squeeze. Um, let's watch. Okay. So I'll play it. I'll play it again here um, for you, Marcus. And, and for the most part, um, you know, I guess I'll let you kind of, kind of take the lead here because people are going to be like, yo, why are you talking? There's an NFL DB on your show. Like let him talk. So, um, what do you what are you seeing with this play uh, from Sauce in general? And I guess we can kind of go frame by frame here. Oh, um, well, I mean, always, I mean, just like I do with my guys, I always like to start with alignment, uh, just yep. using your divider rules. So they're like they're playing in either some kind of man concept or, you mm -hmm. know, match, con you know, three match, rip lives, however you want to call it, you yep. know, concept. So, I mean, you're one yard, you know, top of the numbers. You probably want to play outside. Uh, you know, especially when you got somebody in the hole, uh, or you know, middle of the field. Yep. Uh, just to make it easy for you, yes, the crossing route is going to be, you know, obviously the one that you're chasing. But you know, mm -hmm. depending depending on the depth, he's got to run through all that traffic. But you know, just usually kind of start there. And I do for someone of his size, I do like his feet a lot. He does a good job of staying patient. Um, mm -hmm. it was actually kind of something that I learned. Uh, probably towards the end of my second year as I was playing corner, you know, when Coach Parcells moved me, uh, to just kind of move back a little bit so you don't have to worry about all the dancing and, and everything at the line of scrimmage. You know, you really give yourself time to get your hands on the receiver and move laterally. And I think he, you know, yeah. kind of does a good job with that. Because when you're longer, you, you have that advantage. Because mm -hmm. now you want to make, because you're, you're making the wide receiver run around you yep. as opposed to you trying to keep up with him. So you don't have to fall for the first jerk or the first, uh, you know, movement 
you can really just stay patient. And then, yeah, stab him and then kind of get into the route. So I do like that he does that. He does a good job of understanding his length and, and you know, taking his time when he's, you know, when he's in phase. Looks, it looks like also his eyes are low too here. And then as you, you know, yeah. I, at least I told like, okay, you know, hips, hips don't lie. Um, and obviously right. with, the left, with the left leg being up here, if he's looking at the hips, obviously he's not going to break inside off the left foot unless he's just an idiot. You know, like obviously you're not going right. to break like that. And the thing, the thing, the thing with sauces and in terms of like what the technique you were talking about, I refer to that as like soft shoe. We are not necessarily getting hands on it's, it's feet, it's hips, it's eyes first, then it's hands. And right. with sauce, something that he does do. He, he, he typically plays a little bit soft and then there are times where he'll, oh, and he gets a shuffle in here, which, which we, a slight shuffle, he slightly opens the gate and, and gets a shuffle in and he'll, he'll yeah. do this a lot where he gets a shuffle in. Sometimes it'll hurt him. And you'll see, I think in a little while, we'll watch the, the Vikings game where he gets cooked up a little bit by, by Justin Jefferson because he's just a savage. Um, but he'll typically open up a little bit early. And like you said, his length helps him so much here where he's guarding, he's, he's, he's guarding against a deep route right here. But also if the receiver, because there is some ground for him to cut underneath of him and undercut the coverage here. But Sauce is so long that he'll use that inside arm to like slingshot himself back inside. So he has a little right. bit of like flexibility to open up a little bit earlier than some other guys do. Um, yep. But but yeah, in, in general here now, the only the thing I talked about a couple of times in this review that I didn't um, that I want to ask you about it is just the different like at least your thoughts on the difference between like a kick step and a false step. So to me, to, to what I've learned and what I've researched and done whatever through the years is like a kick step is basically just a step to a, a lateral step to keep you on balance mm-hmm. and, and eliminating, eliminating jump splits. But I only typically I'll refer to a, 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 a kick step when it's more lateral and a false step when it goes more forward. But obviously, if it's a if it's a, a step that sauce is taught, then it's fine. It's not necessarily a false step because he's meaning to do it. Um, but in general, right. like, what are your thoughts on, on like kick step, full stepping type, type deal in terms of like, you know, soft shoe or actual uh, aggressive press coverage? Uh, I mean, it depends on, um, well, here's the deal about false step between false step and kick step. Mm-hmm. You don't, you want to have some kind of step in general, especially when you're playing press. Um, so you're, you know, you kind of get your motor going. So mm-hmm. the way that, you know, I've learned it playing and coaching, whatever it is, the way that I explain it is it's kind of like starting a car. So whatever step you take, so whether it's a lateral six inch step or three inch step or whether it's a forward, you know, three inch step or whatever it is, that's like starting your car and getting and firing your muscles so you can be able to shuffle, you know, and, and run. So I'm not necessarily big on the false step at the front because some people teach, you know, straight square stance where you can you can side step laterally and that's, you know, kind of your kickstarter. Or some people align with a stagger stance. Um, I know early on with Belichick, sometimes he would, you know, he's taught us where if you're playing inside technique, uh, then you want to have your inside foot back a little bit, slightly staggered. Then you take the three inch re-step forward, you know, and that also pushes you and propels you, you know, back into your soft press or your pedal or whatever it Mm -hmm. is and vice versa for the outside foot. Uh, Plus it's a reminder. So if you're playing man coverage, Inside foot up, I know I'm playing man. Outside foot up, I know I'm playing some kind of zone. Like, you know, if you're playing two or mm. you're playing, you know, mod technique, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, so the, the the false the whole false step thing is kind of going away for me just because you do need a kickstarter to get going. Because you don't want to just be flat footed and then try to start and then you're grabbing. And that's why you see a lot of guys get behind because they're flat footed and they don't, you know, they're not moving their feet from the jump because yep. you have to move your feet initially. Like you have to. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really not, I don't know. I'm not really, you know, I don't really talk about the false step that much anymore just because of the different ways and the different techniques you can, you know, different ways you can, you know, kind of move your feet and, and, and pattern, you know, and kind of pattern match and pattern read everything uh, when you're impressed. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's at, at least for me, um, and and the false or or the, like the the kick step, which is like that you know taught false step, whatever you want to refer to it. Um, it's also a thing where like, listen, like you got elite athletes running at you, you t- you your body tends to want to move, and then you tend to jump split if your feet aren't going to be moving. And like you said, like we'll t- right. I talked about a lot with like off coverage and stuff like that, like keeping your feet attached to the ground, but having like foot fire, like keeping those feet moving and attached, you know, but ready to move at the same time. You can't be flat footed, so. Um, right. it, for, for me, like false step versus kick step, it kind of depends on what follows it. Like if you're going to kick step, um, and be balanced and be square. Okay, cool. But if I see a step that, that I'm going to label as a false step, it's when you're going to step forward 
and then your weight's back onto your heels, you're you're hopping backwards at two feet, you're not attached. So it kind of depends to me what follows it. Um, but yeah, yeah here he had he, you know, he has that kick step. He's balanced. He his he's he's with a forward lean. Again, patience. Uh looking at right. the hips, gets a slight, gets a slight shuffle in, squeezes the route off. He doesn't just open vertically, squeeze it off, he squeezes it off to the sideline, gets hands on, yep. looks back for the ball. Great job. Great play by, by Sauce on that one. Um yeah, we'll move to the, the, yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll move to the next one, which is run game eh, which is probably not a good uh, play in the run game, which it is what it is. <laughs> he's off to the right side of the screen. Usually eh or dots mean okay, this is not gonna be a good play, but he's right here right. to the to, to the right side of your screen. Um, and I had a similar play like this uh, later or earlier in the review. It was versus the Pats. Um, there wasn't there there wasn't all this action right here with like the wing. Um, but in in general, we're seeing it's it's a tough spot for him right here too, right? Because like he yeah, doesn't, yeah, he doesn't want to get outflanked to the outside, so he has to maintain yeah, that I, outside leverage. But go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, obviously, you don't know what the call is, so yeah. Um, you know, whoever the – I guess that's a linebacker. I can't tell in front of him. You know, uh, what is his fit? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you got you got to – we don't know what his fit is. Is Shitty foot inside or outside? So, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, yeah. based off of the – based off of the D lineman and his movement, particularly against, you know, or, you know, it, it's still a wing save, even though uh, that's stealing. Uh, you typically want to down, down, and make everything bounce, if that makes sense. So, like, yeah, if you're yeah. getting, like – if you're getting counters or power or whatever it is, so whether it's a DB – or D lineman, you want to make everything. You want to hit it, you know, with the with your, you know, I guess you can call it wrong shoulder. You want to wrong shoulder it and make everything bounce and go out wide. Yeah, you want, to, you, want to, you want you want to spill the run. You want yeah. to spill everything. Yeah, yeah. So so I don't know if 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 the guy in front of him is supposed to be taking an inside gap, which I would assume he is based off of what everybody else is doing. Um, because yeah, Sauce is still maintaining. Correct, because he's main, maintaining his outside leverage. If it's one of those deals where. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DC has given uh, this other guy autonomy to play it the way that he wants to play it. Then you know, Sauce has the RCC; he has the feel off of him. Uh, so he probably needs to move back a little bit uh, and really almost li- line up. I would say like split the difference of him. So yeah. where he's lined up, Sauce needs to scoot over a little bit and split mm-hmm. him down the middle. That way, he can play both gaps. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah, no, that's exactly so that's that's what I was thinking too. Um, with at least now you brought up a good point about that's Whitehead, who I, I people I, I have a disdain for. I don't think he's a good player. I just don't. But it is what it is, and it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense in terms of like the, the the gap responsibility. If you're if you're if you have a bunch of guys shooting certain gaps, one gap's not covered. Looks like Whitehead is right. supposed to fill that. But that's that that was Correct. my point in terms of like in in terms of saying like the a thing is even if he is supposed to have outside, at least be over top enough where you can play the inside if it's if, if he's you right. know, at leverage to the inside. So I just want to see him tighten it up a little bit more over top of this, which it, it does look like um, the Whitehead was supposed to fill that and fill that gap. And I think uh, I think I, I, Iowa State was very big on that, um, like yeah. spilling runs, forcing it to the outside, spilling runs. Yeah. getting guys lateral. Um, Correct. So, Partic- yeah, so, yeah. Particularly, particularly if you're smaller and you've got – but you got tons of speed. You spill everything, and you just go run it down. Absolutely. So yeah. it's not. It's not where, like, if it was old school. Let's just say, if it was like old school three four four, where you got bigger backers, that kind of stuff. Then it doesn't matter. You just plug the holes, and dudes just run into piles, you know. So, mm-hmm. but now, you know, obviously, uh, the game's changed. Everybody's a lot faster, so they just want to spill everything and just go chase it down. For sure. Okay. So next play. Um, here, uh, sauces to the top, and in terms of like the divider rules and stuff like that, at, the, at least when when he's this wide, I like inside, especially with the quarter, with quarterback opposite hash. It's a really hard throw to make if you're going to force it outside and squeeze it. But uh, let's right. see near beat near beat first um, from the, from the jump. This is one of those ones where, and obviously I don't watch just when he's targeted, but he 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 did get beat here for for a first down mm-hmm. on third and third and two, and this is part of it where I talk about like him him soft showing. But when he when he when he soft shoes, to, sometimes he just opens up slightly early, and it's not even to me yep. like get get shuffles in. But it's all about the angle of your shuffle too. Like it's not right. it's it's you have to. I want him to be a little bit more lateral here and and choke that route off as as he stems outside because the problem is when you open up too early, it's really hard for him to flip his hips here, get back inside if he undercuts it, and and you know he has control of his feet and obviously Justin Jefferson the savage so. He's an outside standing foot fire, short stride, get inside. It just is what it is. But uh, anything else you want to uh, or that you see here, you want to 
add in terms of why he got beat there for what would be a first down well, the ball was there? Well, yeah, well, I mean, when you're, you know, when you're self pressing or self shooting, have whatever you want to label it. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing about playing that that coverage, you know, that technique, I should say, is patience. Mm-hmm. That's like the biggest thing, you know. That's that's the the most important part of that technique. Reason being is because you you already have the room, all right. So you you have the room to, to maneuver. If you know, Justin Jefferson wants to, you know, foot fire outside and work back in, or vice versa, whatever it is, or whoever the, it is, you have yeah. to be patient enough and be able to just move laterally till he, you know, till that distance closes. Then you can get your hands on them, and then you can match mm-hmm. the route if that makes mm-hmm. sense. So here, you just want to yeah. see him. Soft shoes, stay in square, soft shoe, and go straight and work straight back. Mm-hmm. Because really, if Justin Jefferson was planning on running the go route, he'd be gone, if that makes sense. Uh, if you go back to the start and just watch his release, mm-hmm. all right, this if you just let it play, that release doesn't tell me I'm going vertical. Yeah. So while I'm, while I'm watching his hips and I'm watching, if he gives me kind of like the lazy off the line, I'm like, all right, let me slow down a little bit. Let me say square. And now I can just react in, you know, in or out, depending on which way he goes, if that makes sense. Yeah. That, so when you, when this you, is, you yeah, were talking this is about all... him backpedaling. Sorry. When you talk about him backpedaling, do you, do you mean like, from, so you don't, no, you, not you... Back, yeah, not, not backpedaling. He just, you just shuffle. So it's okay, okay, soft press. Okay. You just want to shuffle. Yeah. You yeah. So, shuffling, yeah. Okay. But so if I said backpedaling, uh, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's why I, I was, I was confused a little bit. Cause that's what I said. Like, okay, you don't want to open your hips. You want to, even if you slightly angle off, like, okay. But you still gotta stay relatively, relatively square, and especially considering this play, yeah. how, how how wide he is. Like even if you are to stay a little bit Correct. more aggressive and inside than you want to, he doesn't have a lot of space here to run away. So if you're confident in your athletic ability, you squeeze him to the sideline right. if he goes vertical, and you cut him you off. Know? Right. Yeah. So yeah, but um, yeah, but I, my teaching point to him would be obviously patience, patience, patience. Stay square. All right, as you're shuffling back, uh, and then you know you can obviously get your hands on him. Uh, you know, as he closes the gap, and then you get matched the route. You know, that would be my my t- my coaching point to him. You know, if I was in the film room with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, pr- uh, match break. Let's see this one. Uh, bottom of your screen is Sauce. Um, I don't know. I think I think that's KJ Osborne. I don't know though. I'm not really super familiar. At least by the shell, but it looks like it's gonna be quarters. But we'll see. Um. Okay. Yeah, that's it. now there's like a thousand different types of quarter coverages, you know, whether it be like mod or right. meg or box or or switch or red seven switch that Saban likes to throw out there. So there's like a thousand of them. Um, right. <laughs> but but uh what do you what do you what do you see? At least generally it's quarters now. Typically, like the, the, yeah, the most oh go ahead. Yeah, no, it's quarters. Um obviously the tough I mean uh, I mean, I, I I don't necessarily know, like you said, I don't know which Here? version of quarters it is because they let the override go. Yeah, because yeah, typically if you're yeah. playing quarters, even though that's an angle route, the safety will still jump it. You know, that's one way of doing it. Or if you want to pa- try to pass it to the linebacker, which is what they're doing, uh, and let him run it all the way across, which is really tough on him. Um, mm-hmm. But Sauce does a good job, particularly since, you know, especially with the, the split. You know, you got two guys, you know, tight. Um, he doesn't really, you know, fall for the stem, but uh, knowing he has that safety, you know, sitting inside, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, because of whatever, whatever version they're playing, you know, he's playing tight outside, you know, so. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, typically with court, like the most like general type quarters rules is like, okay, he's, he's you know, he's he's going to read that. Is it 10 to 12 yards? If not, okay, then look to the look to the one and Sauce will be playing with the outside leverage because enough help from that from that safety. Um, but right. I do, I, I do like the fact that he weaves to get over the top. I'm very, I know you hate shuffling. I hate shuffling. I love weaving to get over top instead of opening mm-hmm. your hips. So it's, it's a good weave to get over the top, um, matches yep. the inside breaks, uh, gets, gets two hands on the route, feels the route break matches them. It's, it's a good, it's a good play by, by sauce. Just like you said, staying patient yeah, over the top. Play. And then elite athleticism, yeah. like, and, and it's not, and so I'm not saying this is the best example of his athleticism, but the, the way he breaks for a guy at like six three is is pretty ridiculous. Correct. And yeah. also something that I talk about a lot, and I'm, obviously you know, but like having hands on before breaks is so important. Not not only to like push the guy opposite of where he wants to go, or whatever it is. It's 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 really about feeling the route, feeling the breakdown, um, and being able to match it. Obviously, like slingshot yourself back inside on and all that stuff. But um, anything else you want to say about uh, this one for for sauce or? 
move on to the next one. Yeah, no, I mean, this is pretty simple. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, do, I am, you know, as many times as I, have, you know, I guess the, the times that I can't watch him, I am because of his size. I am really impressed with his feet. You know, his footwork is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he does have a, the ability to change directions. You know, the good thing about that is, he, you know, if you watch his feet, you, you know, I know I've only seen three or four clips, but mm-hmm. he really does a good job of keeping his hips under him and keeping his feet under him, you know, when he's moving, uh, which mm-hmm. allows him to break, you know, and change directions, you know, easily, as opposed to most tall guys. Because we're so long, the first thing we want to do is why not base because it doesn't feel right to have your feet that narrow, you know, underneath your heels. But he does a good job of doing that. Mm-hmm. 